program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. David knew that when he has the presence of God, he comes with the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can Welcome to your hour of solution. Hey, guess what? This is your moment of solution. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are battling. I don't know what you have been looking up to God for. But listen, this very moment, God is bringing solution to that situation. God is going to help you. Psalm 1 to 1 says, where shall I look up to? Shall I look to the east, the west, or the south? He said, no, I'm going to look on to the hills because that is where my help comes from my help comes from the Lord listen you have been trusting in man but you are in a season where God is going to prove to you that he is your helper God is going to help you to overcome that obstacle that challenges that you are facing at your place of work the Lord is going to help you to overcome that battle that you are fighting in your marriage the Lord is going to help you to overcome listen I don't know of any man who has ever trusted in God and called unto him for help that the Lord denied help God is not going to change he is not a man that changes he is not a son of man that should change his mind he is not a man that should lie God is going to step in and is going to help you the challenge that you are facing in the lives of your children God is going to help you that health challenge that you are facing God is going to help you God is going to make everything all right I join my faith with yours and I pray that God will turn things around for good for your favor father I bring your people before you tonight I bring them to this altar even though they may not be physically here with me but father there is no distance between you and your people I ask father that you help them take your shield and your buckler and stand up for their help help them in every area that they need help in their finances in their health in their marriage in their home in their business in the lives of their children father arise take your shield and your buckler and stand up for the help of your people in Jesus name we pray amen Amen. God bless you. My name is Tessie Tanyi and I am your host on this program, your hour of solution. Listen, before I came on earth, the spirit of the Lord just laid it in my heart that he is going to help you. I don't know how many tears that you have shed. I don't know how many sleepless nights you have had. I don't know how many people you have consulted or asked for help. I don't know how many times you have been turned down. I don't know how many times that people have rejected your phone call. But listen, God is always there. Remember in Psalm 27, remember that when your father and your your mother abandoned you the Lord will hold you close I see God holding somebody close I see somebody coming into the season of where the supernatural help of God shall be unleashed and continue to flow and flow and overflow you you shall testify Hallelujah. God bless you. God loves you. He sees your pain. He sees your tears. And he says, daughter, I will help you. Son, I will help you. He will help you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that word. We have been talking about living by the Spirit. And today I want to continue that conversation. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. It's amazing that we are talking about help from God. And the Bible also let us know that the Holy Spirit is our helper. So what a perfect time it is to talk and learn about the Holy Spirit. I am here to encourage you to walk in the spirit to live 
by the spirit of the almighty God the coming of the Lord is very near there is no time for you to mingle around there is no time for you to joke with your destiny your eternal destiny and the Bible let us know that those that are going to make it to heaven are those who live their lives not by their flesh not in their fleshly nature but those who live by the spirit spirit of the almighty God these are not my words this is what the Bible let us know the Bible let us know in Galatians 5 22 it says I'm going to read from verse 19 it says when you follow the desires of your sinful nature the results are very clear sexual immorality impurity lustful pleasures idolatry sorcery hostility quarreling jealousy outburst of anger selfish ambition dissension division envy drunkenness wild parties and other sins like this listen it says let me tell you again when he says again that means he has told them before it must be so important that he had to tell them again he said let me tell you again as i have told you before that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of god will not make it to heaven will perish in hell the apostle paul told those christians he was very very concerned about their eternal destiny about where they are going to end up after death because the bible says that it is appointed unto man to die once and after that death it is judgment the apostle paul was so concerned about the eternal destinies of these christians that he had to repeat himself again and again he said let me tell you again as i have already told you before that the people who live according to their flesh will not inherit the kingdom of god will not make it to heaven in verse 16 before he got to verse 19 he told this christian he said walk in the spirits and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh he told them that the only way that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh the only way that this fleshly result the fruit of the flesh will not be seen manifesting in your life he said the only way to do that is to walk in the spirit is to walk in the spirit is to live by the spirit somebody asked me how do i live by the spirit how do i walk by the spirit hallelujah first i want to let you know that there is no way you can walk by the spirit if you have not allowed the spirit of god to take control of your life when we are born into this world we are born with our sinful nature which is our flesh nature but when we give our life to Christ our spirit man becomes born again but guess what you are still living in this body you are still living in this earth so your flesh nature that you have had since birth since your mother brought you into the world will still be very active in fact we always contend with the spirit of Christ that came into your heart when you first gave your life to Christ so we have two natures here that are at war with each other even the apostle paul himself made a confession that he's had the same struggle he said the things that i do not want to do are the things that i keep doing but the things i really want to do are the things i'm not able to do it was a struggle for him as well hallelujah so what am i saying here what i'm saying is after you have given your life to christ hallelujah you need to come to a place of surrender you need to come to a place where you allow the spirit of god to take total control of your life so that you can stop producing the fruit of the flesh and start producing the fruit of the spirit hallelujah so when people look at you what kind of fruit do they see the apostle paul was telling those christians he said let the spirit of god 
lead you, guide you, take total control of your life so that every fruit that you shall produce shall be fruits of the Holy Spirit. That is the reason that it is not called our own fruits. It is called the fruit of the Spirit because it is the Spirit that is in man that produces the fruit through that man. Hallelujah. But in the same manner, anyone that has not allowed the Spirit of God to take total possession of them, to live in them, to lead and to guide them, in the same manner, they cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit because they don't have the Holy Spirit of God residence in them. So the fruits that you see in such Christians will be fruit like jealousy, anger, backbiting, quarreling, idolatry, fornication, adultery, drunkenness. These are the kind of fruits you see in such people. And then the scriptures here let us know that the people who produces this fruit of the flesh is because the flesh nature is still the one that is ruling them. As a result of that, the flesh nature cannot take them anywhere good. It cannot take them to heaven. It can and only lead them to hell so it was a great concern for this apostle Paul that he had to reiterate it to those believers so the Holy Spirit is doing the same thing today because he loves you and he cares so much and he yearns to see your soul spend eternity with him so he's bringing this message of salvation to you today to say my daughter live by my spirit my son live by my spirit the only way you can stop fulfilling the desires of the flesh is if you allow my Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you, to control you. And he said that is the only way that you are truly my child and that is the only way that you can spend eternity with me. Hallelujah. Where do you want to spend eternity? Do you want to spend eternity with the precious Lord Jesus Christ? and rule and reign forever with him or do you want to spend eternity in the eternal flames of hell i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice right now that you will not be lured away by the deceptions of satan that your soul will not be counted among those that are going to rot in hell i pray for you that jesus will tie you to himself the spirit of the lord will tie you to himself and bring you to the place that God desires and longs for you to be in Jesus name we pray everyone watching me right now listening to me right now you shall not miss God you shall not miss God on the day of the Lord's return you shall not be ashamed you shall not be found wanting God we say well done my faithful servants in Jesus name amen hallelujah now that the apostle let us Christians know that if you walk by your spirit, if you allow the spirit of the Lord to control you, he will lead you to the right place, which is heaven, which is where God has reserved for you, for you to spend eternity. But he says, when you allow yourself to be led by the flesh, mm -mm, my God, it's going to lead to the wrong place. He said, that place is not for you. I pray for you again that you will not miss heaven. You will not miss your inheritance in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want you to write down the first thing, hallelujah, that you must do to allow the Spirit of God to lead you. You must first of all be born again. You must first of all give your life to Christ. So if you are watching me, you are listening right now, and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus to become your Lord and Savior, I am going to pray the prayer of salvation with you shortly. So I want you to prepare your mind and listen as you are going to say, Lord, I give my life to you. I am going to come to that shortly, but I want to share with you the remaining five things after you give your life to Christ. The remaining five things that you should put in place to allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead you so that when you live by the Spirit, the fruits that people will be seeing coming out from you will be fruits of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Instead of bitterness, you will begin to exercise forgiveness. Instead of hate, you will begin to exercise love. Instead of anger, you will begin to exercise patience. 
instead of gossiping, quarreling, backbiting, you will start to pray for your neighbor who has wronged you. Instead of greed, you will learn to let go of material things. You will become gentle and calm as peace and peaceful. Hallelujah. As the spirit of the Lord takes total control of your life. Hallelujah. So there are many five things quickly. I want you to write down number two. After you have given your life to Christ, the next thing is you must hunger and thirst after righteousness. My God, I cannot say this enough. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 6, that when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. When God fills you with righteousness, you will hate sin with everything in you. I I know how God did it to me. I know when I started to crave and hunger and thirst after God's righteousness. I said, Lord, all I want to do is live a life that is pleasing to you. God created an enmity between me and sin. I hated sin and I still do now. I began to hate sin so much with everything in me. I never wanted to have anything to do with sin. Hallelujah. And when I accidentally, on, if I don't know that something is a sin and I do it and God begin to show me that he was offended by maybe my joke or, you know, I, I, I go on my knees right away and say, Father, I am sorry. I never knew that that would offend you. And I say, Father, please help me not to do that again. Hallelujah. So you must hunger for righteousness. You must want to live a righteous life. Hallelujah. And God will begin to purify you. He will begin to cleanse you of every wrong and sinful act as he fills you with the righteous living that you need to live. Hallelujah. The number three, you must recognize that the Holy Spirit is the source of your new life. So in humility, you must surrender all to him and ask him to help you. I always tell people that you must come to a realization that the spiritual life is humanly impossible. It is humanly impossible. The spiritual life is not something that you can live by your own human effort. You must come to a place of surrender and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to lead me. I want to be led by you. I want you to possess me. I want to be controlled by you. I want to live by the Spirit. I do not want to walk after the flesh. You must say, but I cannot do it by myself. Holy Spirit, help me when you ask him in humility in sincerity when you ask him to help you holy spirit will take over and he will start to help you you will find out that the things that you were struggling trying to do by yourself will not be a struggle anymore as the spirit of the lord begin to help you it is not wrong for you to say holy spirit i find it hard to forgive people but i do not want to harbor bitterness in my heart please help me teach me how to forgive help me to love help me to pray help me to study the, your word help me to be obedient to the command of god help me to obey scriptures help me to love my neighbor help me to be meek help me to be humble help me to be patient help me to be kind help me to be gentle when you come like that in humility and say help me hallelujah God said that if his people will humble themselves and pray, he will hear them. When you come like that, genuinely say, Holy Spirit, I cannot do it by myself. Help me. The Holy Spirit will help you. If you look at Philippians 1.19, the Apostle Paul said, For I know that as you pray for me and the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. He acknowledged that as the people pray for him and as the Spirit of Christ help him, he acknowledged that the help he needed was the spirit of christ he knew that he would not be able to do it by himself hallelujah if you look at ezekiel 36 27 but the word of the lord says and i will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations so you see my brothers and sisters it is not by power it is not by mind but it is by the spirit of god god knew that there is no way the people will be able to humanly with their own strength and power and wisdom say i want to obey god i want to do the will of god 
God. I want to obey God's command. He knew that they will not be able to do it themselves. They will keep failing and faulting. But he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my spirit within you and cause you to obey my commands. So it is the spirit of the Lord that helps us. Hallelujah. To live the kind of life that God wants us to live. It is the spirit of the Lord that helps us to live, to allow the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to guide us, to live by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The fourth thing I want to share with you, you have to be conscious of his presence. When you wake up in the morning, you have to know that Holy Spirit is right there with you. You need to say good morning, Holy Spirit. Everything you do as you go about your day, you should know that the Holy Spirit is with you. Some people want try to live righteous life when they know that people, other people are watching them. But when they are not in church or when they are not in the place where people can see them when they are in their closet they live a different lifestyle that is not what God wants from us when you know that even though nobody is there watching you but the Spirit of God is there watching you when Satan bring that thoughts to you to engage in masturbation when you are all by yourself when you say no the Spirit of the Lord is right here with me I do not want to offend him hallelujah when you are being tempted to commit adultery and you say even though my wife is not here to see me even though my husband is not here to see me but i know that nothing can be hidden from god the spirit of the lord sees is here with me i will resist this temptation take your shoes and run the bible says flee temptation when you have to be conscious that the spirit of the lord is always there when you are conscious like that you will be careful not to offend him you would want to do everything live a life that pleases him number five you have to have the fear of god in your heart you have to have the fear of god in your heart the bible says in proverbs that the fear of god is the beginning of all wisdom you have to have the fear of god in your heart if joseph did not have the fear of god in his heart he would have committed a adultery with Potiphar's wife and that would have ruined his internal destiny and the destinies of you and I today hallelujah because of his righteousness hallelujah God was able to bring to pass that which he was going to do in the lives of the Israelites and that is how all of us are benefiting from that today hallelujah he knew that nobody was there with him just him and the woman but because of the fear of God that he had in his heart he flee the bible says that he even left his garment behind he ran away why because he did not want to disappoint god because he carried the fear of god in his heart when you are afraid of god you will be afraid to do things that you know that god will be offended when you do them because you fear him because you fear him you always want to do things that bring honor to his name Hallelujah. And number six, you have to develop relationship with God. Develop intimacy with God. Hallelujah. The Jesus says in John 15, 4 and 5, he says, abide in me and I in you. When you abide in God, when you spend time with him, worship him, pressing our time alone with him, worshiping him, praising him, studying his word, talking with him, praying to him, you are building intimacy with him you are developing profound relationship with the lord when you have relationship with the person of the holy spirit then you will see that what begins to come out of you will be the fruits of the holy spirit you resemble whom you assemble with when you hang out with the wrong folks you talk anyhow you behave anyhow you dress anyhow but when you hang out with the right people the way you comport yourself your character everything becomes different why because of the environment that you have been so when you make the Lord's environment your habitat when you dwell in him and live in him you will see that you resemble whom you assemble you will see that the fruits that will be coming out from you will be fruits of the holy spirit the way you talk the way you think the way you act the way you behave the way you dress everything will be different people will see the fruits of the holy spirit 
in your life i want you to practice these things that i have told you don't just hear me talk about them but make up your mind to practice them and i want to pray with you that the lord help you hallelujah and listen do not be discouraged as you go about as you set out to practice these things there are times that you may fall there are times that you may make mistakes nobody is above mistakes there are times you may make error do not be discouraged all you need to do is to say lord i am sorry forgive me and then continue your journey with the lord the lord looks at the heart that you are humble that you surrender and you want his holy spirit to really guide you that is what the lord is looking for hallelujah so i want to pray with you if you've not given your life to christ say dear lord jesus i am sorry have mercy on me for all my sins forgive me come into my heart become my lord and savior accept me into your kingdom translate me from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of your of, of your marvelous light from today i am now born again jesus you are now my lord and savior thank you for accepting me as your child in jesus name we pray Amen. God bless you. And also, Hello, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Nigeria, how are you doing? I just want you to know that it doesn't matter how deep or how high or how scary the storm may be. I want you to know that Jesus is the one who knows how to calm the storm. We are praying for you guys. We care about you guys. We are interceding for you. I have my spiritual father, my pastor here with me and he's joining me today to say a word of prayer for Nigeria. Pastor Amen. Lawrence. Amen. Thanks, uh, Tessie. We're going to pray and we're going to believe God. I've been on the internet. I've seen some of the heartache and the trouble that is carrying on and going on in Nigeria. And I want you to know that your Canadian brothers and sisters haven't forgotten you, but we are praying for you. And so right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. we call down the power of God Amen. and we ask this anointing to rest on Nigeria. Amen. Drive back the forces of darkness. Amen. Drive back the forces of evil. Amen. Drive back the pr brutality Amen. that is being propagated and pushed forward Amen. and father god let the spirit of peace rise Amen. up Amen. let people in the midst of this tragedy Amen. and turmoil Amen. the riots and the brutality Amen. that is being forced upon them through Amen. the corruption and the police that lord it will be dissipated Amen. and your name will be upheld Amen. and people are going to come through Amen. and turn their hearts over to you lord Amen. jesus and so we speak to Nigeria Amen. and we say Nigeria live. Amen. We say Nigerians Amen. live. We say you spirits of darkness Amen. and witchcraft Amen. and evil forces over Amen. this country that would want to bring division mm -hmm. and want to bring death. You have no hope. The blood of Jesus covers yes, that yes, nation yes, now yes, in the name yes. of Jesus. Amen. And we say you are free. Amen. You are delivered. Amen. And you spirit of disruption Amen. and rebellion Amen. and disobedience Amen. go. Amen. And let the power of God Amen. become forceful Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the heart of every believer. Amen. Keep the saints protected. Amen. Keep their families protected, Amen. we pray. And let them walk in victory and amen. share the good news that amen. Jesus lives. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. 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 We love you. We we'll love you guys you. so much. We keep praying for you. Like my father just said, remember that Jesus is with you. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Nigeria belongs to God. Yes. God has not turned his back against you. Mm. And Jesus loves you. We love you too. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. And I love you. Thank you for being a part of this program. Join us same time next week for another fresh episode.